Welcome back to What RT Noobs for General Disturbance. This is an M12, the Tier 7 American SPG. It's located on the northeast, northwest spawn of Fjords and it's under the command of Angelina 75. Okay, game started. Well, the M12, it's got a 155mm howitzer of French design. It's a very accurate gun, but it does take a little time to work the crews up to full performance. But once they are at full performance, it does work quite well. It's basically an M3 hull with a huge artillery piece mounted on top of it. Okay, Angelina's found her firing position. It's probably the most well-known firing position in the game which does kind of make her vulnerable to enemy fire, but let's see how she gets on. Well, she's got a couple of targets straight off. There's some tanks that are nearby. We've got an AMX 1357 who's just trying to fire his uh, magazine. She's trying to find a solution that will work to hit him, but it is very difficult to loop a shell onto that uh, tank. She's lined up, round out. Nice bit of splash. And she tracked him, and he is taking damage, and he's gone. So she got the damage assist off that one as well. Over on the South Pass, we've got an ISM, an Object 252U, and there was another tank there as well for a brief moment, a Striv, I think. And, oh, KV-3. Okay, she's loaded, and she fires around in, hoping to get the ISM, and she gets him. Direct hit on the ISM. Only 261, but it still counts. And of course, it lets the guys on the other side of the pass know that they've got RT hitting the guys who are trying to stop them coming through the pass. And she's loaded. She's got another one in the breach. Rounds out. That one hits the rock face, I'm afraid. It, it hit the rock face premature to actually getting to the destination. Yes, it's a very difficult shot over the top of the rocks. Now, you don't get a whole lot of ammunition in the M12, I'm afraid. It's only 20 rounds. She finds another one in and more than just basically stuns all of them there, which is useful because it slows them down, slows their reloads and makes them susceptible. Okay, we just saw an enemy tank die there in the south, but she's going back to the southwest corner, or, uh, south corner, the south pass corner because there are still tanks there and they're the only ones she can shoot at for the moment. She fires a round in. It does stun one of them, I think it did. But she's now selecting, well, she's having a look at the Western Pass. She can't hit that, oh, the Eastern Pass. She can't hit these guys though, because the rock face is in the way. So she's gonna change position. She knows what the P in SPG stands for. It means propelled. And the ideal thing to do under these circumstances is to find a new position where you can get shots on those enemy. And sometimes you can actually do that by going up through these little passes here, these chines, and shooting up at the enemy. It's not the usual place for RT to go, but it actually does sometimes work. And it's quite surprising for the enemy if they get hit by an RT round. That's good. Okay, this is good. Now, the Steel Waffentrager is the guy who's actually doing the spotting for her. Unfortunately, from this current position, she can't hit the Indian Panzer because the rock face is in the way. She needs to change position again, get further south. It's more risk, but it's worth it because you might be able to get shots onto that guy. Okay, she can shoot up over this rock here into the enemy. She's gone to the aim. Has she got a shot? Yes, she has. And she can hit him. The rock face is not in the way now. She's marked the ground to tell her teammates that's where I'm looking. She just needs to find out where he is. And there's the T25 too. Rounds out. Lovely shot. 303 right into his rear. He's a lightly skinned tank destroyer. And so that one did quite a lot of damage. The next target's the Indian Panzer, who just took a whopping great hit from two tanks. I think the steer and the uh, some of the other tanks who are looking into that pass. She's lining up a shot. As soon as he comes back again, she fires around in anyway. 
I think it went a bit long, actually. Oh, no, but she stunned him. And he's now trying to get away because he realises they're in trouble. There's, it's 8-1 at the moment on scores, and our tanks are now starting to move to to uh, catch the enemies at the South Pass in a crossfire. And I think Angelina's just spotted that as well. But from her current position, she hasn't got a shot on those guys, but she might be able to get a shot on the enemy if they come around that corner. Just waiting for them to appear. There is still an enemy RT in play, but she doesn't know where that one is. Oh, now the VK is in sight. Now, can she line up a shot? No. No, red line. So you can't. There's nothing. It's the rock, I think. The rocks nearby are actually in the way. She's got no shot over that side either. Normally under these circumstances, uh, what I would do is i drive towards the enemy cap and try and shotgun the enemy tanks face to face. If I can. It's not really that desperate though. She can't loop the shell over those houses. They're in virtually impenetrable obstruction. But the VK seems to be getting monstered by that E25. And he probably doesn't like it because he can't depress his gun enough to shoot the E25. The E25 got him. So there's only three enemies left now. The RT, which is a GW Panther. And she's now extending her aim to try and look for him. Now, more than likely, he's going to be on the peninsula because they've looked everywhere else. And the moment he's spotted, she should be able to get a shot at him. We're looking for any trace. Somebody's going down the peninsula. It's the E25. Be nice if you could get some damage. There he is. Lines up the shot. And rounds out. Direct hit. Oh, big hit. 318 makes it an easy job for the E25 to get the kill shot. That was a good one. And there's only two enemies remaining now, so the good thing to do would be to get into a position to shoot up the Eastern Pass at them. Um, I don't think they're going to go to our cap, and it would be pointless anyway because uh, we would win immediately by capping out. There's only two left. But nobody actually left the other side of the pass covered. So the enemy might retreat in that direction. <laughs> they probably think that there's enemy coming down towards them. The E25's gone up there to try and find them. I think he will chase them regardless of uh, where they go. Angelina's setting herself up to get a nice little shot. Unfortunately, they have retreated far enough. Oh no, she's going to get another shot on that E25. And in fact, she's probably the only one who can hit him. Yes, big hit. And go for another one. Can the E25 get the kill on the E25? Yes, he can. That means there's only one enemy left. It's the Indian Panzer. And we've capped out. So that's the end of the game. So, good repositioning by Angelina in that game. Good repositioning. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. Well, it's a third class tanker for Angelina 75 in the M12. She managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. She got nine. And she got a confederate medal for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on her team. At least six tanks subsequently taken out by others. In fact, she didn't get any kills at all in the game. But she did get a nice bit of damage. And her win eight from the game was 1,559, which is good. So, let's have a look at team score. Well, she didn't get the highest damage in the game. That went to the VK101P on her team with 3,272. Got the high calibre. The next high scorer was, in actual fact, the ISM on the enemy team with 2325. And after that, it was the Lorraine 40 time with 2,198. Angelina got 1,348, which is not bad. But there weren't that many targets that she could shoot at during that game. When it came to kills, it was the VK again with five kills. Three kills went to the Indian Panzer, who managed to get away. Two kills went to the Lorraine 40 Tan, the E25, the other E25. And Angelina got no kills at all. But when it came to base XP, it was that VK again who's got the top spot. He's got the top in all three columns. 1,149 to him. He was the only one to get over 1,000. 732 to the 7032. 715 to the Steel Waffen Traeger. 
690 to the Lorraine 40 ton and then we've got Angelina with 688 in that game. She fired nine rounds, got four direct hits, no penetration, but 10 splash. Damage of 1,348 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage six of the enemy, didn't get any kills, but she did get 573 hit points of damage assistance and 178 hit points of stun assist of 10 stuns. On a premium count, she earned 29,030 credits from that game, got 70,000 credits for completing the mission and events, and that brought up a total of 99,030 credits. And after ammunition resupply, took away a profit of 88,950 credits. Mind you, that was helped by getting that mission completion. That was a lovely um, uh, collection there. 1,032 XP. Times two for the first victory, 2,064 experience points altogether. She says using the P and SPG on Fords. But it is actually, the, the thing is to relocate if you've got no shots. Uh, there's no point really staying in the same position unless you expect enemy to come into view. And Fjords is one of those maps where the mountains can be a major headache when it, can, uh, when it comes to actually getting shots on the enemy. So sometimes actually relocating and doing substantial relocations, which is what Angelina did, to get the enemy within your arc of fire can actually pay dividends. Because then you get some more damage than you would just by sitting where you were doing absolutely nothing. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching.